have better creatures, whereas Blake's red is to have better elimination. Yeah, exactly. Better removal. Also, a card like Pillar of Flame is just super cheap, super efficient against any of the absent Pilgrims or Arbor Elves out there. Yeah, Blake also has the advantage of having Kessig Wolf run in his deck. Yeah, I think I think John has a better matchup versus the control decks, especially with a card like Rakdos Return. Sure. All right, but they're off. So Blake leaves off with a Forest, passes the turn. Now, now both decks will probably come out pretty slow. But once it gets to turn three, turn four, turn five, you can see really powerful cards hitting the battlefield. These are both uh, far seek decks, and uh, Blake not having one, not going to be the uh, the best thing ever. Exactly, and, and John Neither not having John. one either. So maybe they both knew the matchup and they both decided to keep slower hands. Possible. Ooh, Blake Ooh. misses a second land drop though. Yeah, that, that's that's always spells disaster yeah. for this sort of matchup. All right, so John hits his third land, no problem. Let's see if he has a play here. Doesn't look like it. Ooh, nothing again. Oh, and Blake misses again. Blake just has this a handful. Not... Yeah, abrupt decays, missing mortars. Not really what he wants against a junk type deck. Maybe if he was against a more aggressive deck, he could use some of his removal, eliminate some creatures. But John's just gonna wait until he has four or five mana and start playing really powerful cards. Luckily for Blake, it's not back breaking because John isn't putting any pressure on. But once John gets going, it's gonna be a lot tougher for him to stop. But Blake does have Mizium Mortars, Abrupt Decay in hand. He can't cast the Abrupt Decay right now, but he has ways to answer things. He just has no threats. Sure, sure. But he's got to be worried from, from John dropping a Garrick or something that, you know, he can't Abrupt Decay or can't even Mizium Mortars. Yeah. So, John, John up to five lands right now. So next turn, you could have access to six mana. Blake's legendary trump being Olivia. Uh, not great against John's Obsidat Ghost Council. Definitely not. The, 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 the Ghost Council is just the beating. We saw it all day. Just really destroy people. Just super powerful, super efficient. Five mana, five, five. Have a, has an ability when it comes into play. And it looks like Blake is just discarding again. Another Garrick hits the bin. Ooh, there's an unburial race from John. That's another advantage that the white gives John is more copies of Restoration Angel, Loxodon on Smiter, Vampire Nighthawk, Thrag Tusk. Exactly. There's the, there's ghost, the ghost Dad himself. Yeah. So it's more like the Ghost granddad but there he's is. asking what the text on uh, Obzidat Ghost Council is and we're gonna get that text for you too since you can play along at home sure I'm, I'm not sure if John remembered the two life I'm not sure if Blake maybe Blake is just might tracking. be responding oh responding maybe possibly yeah I'm, I'm not really too sure I don't know yeah bluffing skull crack I guess oh yeah bluffing skull crack maybe actually today we saw almost no bluffs only one person bluffed really the entire day and who, I was coming was that it was it was round two, I think, or round four against Osip. He just played an untapped land, paying two life to bluff a Boros Charm when he didn't have it. Sure. But I was coming up with all these crazy bluffs, but no one decided to go with it. So Obzidat is, uh, well, we don't have the text for you, but it's when he comes into play, you gain two and it, he drains two. There sure. he is. There he is. Perfect. And then at the beginning of your end, end step. step yeah. You may exile Obsidot. If you return it to the battlefield under his control, it gains haste. Yes. So pretty much what John did was the reason why he put it on top of his library was to was remind himself. Yeah, yeah, it was signifying that he, he phased it out. Because that so, is a delayed trigger, folks. If you forget it, it's gone forever. It's gone forever. Yeah. So right. Blake, instead of trying to play out the rest of that game, did it's, not find a land. We're going to quickly move on to the next game. Sure, we, we definitely will. All right, so Blake's going to go to the sideboard. Blake might board in a couple of things. Definitely duress. I feel that he wants to be able to hit his opponent's planeswalkers, maybe some of his power, powerful spells, maybe even just get a far seat. Sure. He's yeah. also going to bring in Underworld Connections. Yeah, definitely, because if it's going to be a grindy game, Underworld Connection is the perfect card to gain card advantage. And uh, maybe even some Death Rite Shaman. I think Death Rite Shaman is a good choice. Um, he doesn't know that John has Unburial Rites, but it's certainly going to be good when he brings it in. Sure. Uh -huh. And what do you think about the Silk Lash Spider? Just to have a really big body. And also he knows that John's playing Junk, so maybe he's afraid of Lingering Souls. Lingering Souls. Uh, he can also reasonably expect Restoration Angel. Yeah, I exactly. Think, yeah. Um, which he does, which John does have. I think that that's a reasonable thing to bring in. And Blake does have some stuff that he doesn't yeah, really want. Yeah, he has a really lot of want. stuff. Something like a Pillar of Flame. Yeah, he doesn't want Pillar of Flame. He probably doesn't want Abrupt Decays. Um... I'm not sure how good Bonfire of the Damned is, yeah. although we didn't see a ton of John's deck, so he didn't either. Yeah, exactly. Now, if Blake thinks that John does have the full, you know, yeah, four lingering souls, souls exactly. Bonfire's pretty good against it, but we know that he doesn't. Right. So Bonfire wouldn't really be too good against John. For John's side of things, I think that uh, it would be quite reasonable to expect Liliana of the Veil. 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, Liliana is so good in the control matchups or mid range to control matchups. Yeah, he's also going to bring in his Death Ray Shaman. Um, and that's possibly about it, although he might bring in Thalia. Yeah, Thalia's reasonable. He saw two Garrett Primal Hunters. Yeah. And so, you know, he knows that Blake's whatever he's playing is big mana things. Exactly. But it's possible that those are like the Garrett's that are of the 35 creatures in the Naya deck. Sure. So he doesn't really know what's going on there yet. Yeah, and if he has a read on Blake and he has more of an idea what Blake is actually playing, he might think, you know, these Thalia's might be good because I know Blake's going to board out my, his cheap removal. He's going to board out his his Mizium Mortars, most likely. He's going to board out his Pillar of Flames, maybe if he has Searing Spears. So Thalia might actually stay in play, deal some damage, and really disrupt Blake's plan of John's you know, gonna, ramping. John's going to take out his Abrupt Decays. Yes, most likely. Um, and that might be about it. Although Lotless Troll, I don't know if that's good in this matchup. I mean, I don't know how good Lotless Troll is in his deck, really. Yeah, it doesn't seem great. I mean, he's got the Unburial Rights. Sure. That's about it, though, in terms of taking advantage of uh, yeah. the Graveyard. Even with Unburial Rights, it's not like he has an Angel Serenity where you could just pitch it and, and flash back the Unburial Rights. Right, he doesn't have huge reanimation targets. Exactly. I mean, most of the creatures that he'll be Unburial Rightsing back it would be on turn four, turn five. He could just cast those cards in turn four, turn five. I think Lotless Troll is mostly in there to just be a, a River Boa, just a yeah. two-owner generator. Yeah, with with additional uh, with, know, feature. With some upside, yeah. Yeah, definitely. What do you think about the Blind Obediences? Do you think there's a chance John brings those in? Not in this matchup. Blind Obedience is to be able to deal with Hellrider, Falconrath Aristocrat, and Thundermont Hellkite. I don't think they're for this matchup, although in a grindy matchup like yeah. this, they, they can activate a ton of times. Definitely. They... Uh, they will cancel out any Falcon Rath Aristocrats Blake might have, as Jund sometimes does play those. Definitely. Um, but, you know, it's it's not it's not like John's playing against his own deck where he has to worry about Restoration Angel shenanigans. He's not worried about uh, Ash Zealots. So I don't think that... I, I would guess that they wouldn't come in. Okay. Not because they aren't good, but because there's nothing else to take out. Sure. I'm surprised we're not seeing that many Blind Obedience's main deck. A lot of players have them on the sideboard. I yeah, like I think that um, a lot of people are afraid to play at main deck because of it might because of the perceived badness against control. But I think it's a better game one card than it is a cyborg card. I agree too. Yeah. And also it's not that bad against control. No, definitely not. So, yeah. This game Blake has mana. He does. He he had a far seek on turn two, which is always good. And he's shuffling up. So next ne next turn we'll have access to four mana, assuming he has the fourth land, which he does in his hand. Yeah. So this game's going to be a, a bit different than the last game for Blake. John, on the other hand, plays his second land in the form of Sun Petal Grove. He does not have a far seek, but he's got, I think, the triple smiter hand. Okay, so he's just going to go more and more aggressive here. Yeah, I think that's what's happening. And let's see what Blake has here. He definitely has two. Okay. So Blake has an overgrown tomb. He's, he's going to play the two life. He's either going to play an Olivia or a Huntmaster. Yeah, Huntmaster's the better yeah. one here. Yeah, Huntmaster's definitely the better play. He's going to... Use Huntmaster's ability, he's gonna gain two, he's gonna get a wolf, and uh, he's gonna, you know, pretty much develop his board the best way he could. And the paying the life off the land, not even remotely yeah. relevant this early in this matchup. Yeah, well, so. or in this matchup for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. Which side would you rather be on, the junk or the jun side? Probably, I think I would rather be on the junk side. Yeah, I agree. Um, because. In this matchup, I like having the variable threats more than the variable answers. Yeah. Although I do, I do like his 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 list. He's got a one of sever the bloodline to be able to deal with hard to answer things. Three primal hunters is very good for all the card draw. I like his list, sure. but I, I think I'd still be I'd rather be yeah. on the uh, the unburial right side of the mid range. Man. Yeah, I think the white creatures are much better than the red removal in this matchup. Yeah. So John plays one of his locks and smiters, and there's a duress from Blake, as we thought he would board in. So we'll take a look at John's hand. We see a couple of lands, a couple of creatures, ooh. And a couple of abrupt decays, yeah, which are not very good right now. Well, at least Blake knows about the abrupt decays, because that once the Huntmaster flips... It becomes a zero. Yeah. So, I mean, Blake's going to be able to take away one of the abrupt decays with the duress, and he's also going to have knowledge that, hey, John does have another abrupt decay. I should be careful with my Huntmaster. Right. So this was a double smiter and obzadot hand. Yeah, the Ghost Council, once again, just so powerful. Yeah, he's just looming there. He's it, bigger than everything in Blake's deck, except yeah. for Thragtusk. And 
almost negates the life gain on the Thrag Test by himself. Yeah, I mean, just the five mana five five is, is a powerful card, let alone the awesome ability that Ghost Council has. I was a little skeptical that Obzadot was going to see standard play because if you're playing five drops, they better match up real good with Thundermaw, Hellkite, and Thrag Tusk. Sure. Turns out Obzadot does. Yeah, it really does. So. Yeah. And it's just awesome being able to remove it so you never have to worry about a Supreme Verdict or very rarely a Terminus. Yep. Almost nothing kills that guy other than uh, Murder or Victim of Night. Pretty much are the only cards that deal with Obzadot. And very few people are playing Victim of Night and Murder. So. Exactly, yeah. Victim of Night, see some play, but not too much. Yeah. Even though the mana is really good in the format, sometimes having black black is, is difficult. Also draw back, doesn't kill Home Master. So John decides to attack here, go on the aggressive. I think he's... Okay, so he's either going to pass or he's going to play the other Smiter. He also brought in the Blind Obedience. Yeah, which, which we, we kind of thought could we be We thought he might do. Yeah. Alright, so there's the first Blind Obedience of the match. Then he's just going to pass the turn. Yeah, this is going to be uh, Abrupt Decay time, assuming Blake doesn't play a spell. Well, I'm pretty sure Blake's definitely going to play a well, spell. Sure. Just, yeah. Oh, we see a bonfire. Wow, so Blake kept in his bonfire the dams. I'm not really too sure about that. Well, he didn't know that he didn't have Lingering Souls like we discussed. Yeah, that's so. true. I, and I guess Lingering Souls is just really good against Jun. Yeah, Lingering Souls, Blind Obedience, also really good together. Yeah, I'm surprised there's not a deck like that. It's probably coming. I mean, the format just hasn't... Uh, we played a second main phase Falkenroth Aristocrat. No, it's, it's Olivia. Oh, that's Olivia. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I just yeah, it's off screen some, but... Comes into play tap. Yeah, John points it out. Now, the Olivia is going to do a lot of work here as long as it lives. It's going to grow, and I mean, if Which John... Which is not out of the question, because yeah. John did not show anything that could kill it. Yeah, his hand was just another smiter. It was a ghost council, and it was double a breath decay at the time. And John didn't draw any piece of removal that I could see, so... And he's reading the Olivia. So we're going to read Olivia. So Olivia, just for one colorless and one red, will deal damage to target creature. That creature will become a vampire. Yes. Now for three colorless and black black, you gain control of target vampire. Right. So essentially for seven mana, you can steal any creature. There is on the screen, it also gets a plus one plus one counter in addition right. to that. Right, Olivia does. Don't forget that she gets enormous all by herself. It's yeah, yeah. Like a really flying is. planeswalker. There's the Obzadot on John's side of the board, dueling legendary gold creatures. So it's going to come into play, drain for two. John doesn't have the additional mana to play for the blind obedience, but at this point, it's not that relevant. Not, yeah, not that. Yeah. I think that that's just the gravy. Yeah, on, exactly. Uh, yeah. On blind obedience. Yeah. You're playing it for the first ability, not for the extort. Uh, it's close. It's close. It's a little close. Yeah. I mean, once you can start, it's not like you have to garner every little bit of advantage. Sure. And as you see, he cast this with the uh, help from the cavern naming Spirit. So I think John's going to bash him for four. Now, do you think he's going to blink out? Yes. The Ghost Council? I absolutely think he's going to blink out the Ghost Council. Ooh, I he, think that... Oh, he didn't. He does not. He wants oh. to be able to... Oh, he, oh, he does. Okay. Yeah, jo I think that John just needs to be on the aggro plan here. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely kind of a weird game. But I mean, Blake does have a Thraktus in his hand, which yeah. obviously John doesn't know about. Now, I think there was some debate here because John said go. Yeah. And then... And then decided to blink. Yeah. So normally there, you would want to say, at the beginning of my end step, I'm going to use this ability. Now I'll pass the turn. You want to be very clear because it actually did look like he pointed and then... Blake started on tapping, and I actually said to you, I was saying, hey, sure, you know, so I think there, there may be calling oh, a judge no, over he's to, just thinking, I think, to figure it out. Okay. So bonfire for two? No, bonfire off the top. Oh, oh we were thinking oh, about that's bonfire. That's what we were thinking about, okay, yeah. But so it did he, also look like John passed the turn and then put the, right. the ghost council. And so we'll get an updated life total for you here. Sure. I don't know what uh, what the life total is at. Oh, there's a Thrag Tusk. Yeah, that Thrag Tusk is definitely going to help John. Definitely a good draw. Also interesting uh, to note, Blake missed his land drop, so getting to that 7 isn't the easiest. Sure. All right, so the, the life total should be adjusted after the, this 5 life. So it should be John at 10, Blake at 8. Would you have extorted there? I think I would have extorted Yeah, there. I'm not really sure why he didn't. Because Blake goes to three now instead of to two. Two, yeah. At which point the Obzadot would just kill him on the way back in. Yeah, exactly, yeah. 
I, as long as these life totals are correct. But still, like, why would you leave open? Yeah, we were some pedal grove. We're bluffing Rangers, Guile. Yeah, it's just, it's just maybe, maybe he just forgot about that. I That's think the he most just likely forgot story. About it. Yeah. So Blake draws for his turn. Looks like a vampire night hawk he drew. It's not too shabby. Yeah. Although he, we still have a broke decay. On John's yeah, side of the board. Yeah, that, that's the other problem. There. So it's not it's not ideal now that I think about it. But I think John did just forget about the uh, the extort. Don't forget your extort at home, kids. Yeah, you definitely want to. That's one of the main reasons for just for bleed obedience. value yeah. exactly. So I think Blake's gonna drop a Thrag Tusk here. That's what we, that I mean. That was his plan last turn, but then he miracle the bonfire. Right. Which wasn't even that great to be honest. Yeah, it, it only got rid of a Loxodon Smiter and dealt four damage. It's not. It's just, it was just Shower of Coals. Yeah, just just not that powerful. It's not good enough. Yeah, I think Bonfire really lost a lot. A lot of power. Sure. A lot of. I mean, at one point that that card was a fifty dollar card. Everybody had four Bonfires. In their well, decks. Boros Reckoner is a hell of a card. Yeah. That's real good against Bonfire. Sure. Point. So I mean, but even before Boros Reckoner, Bonfire really yeah really dropped started, in value. Yeah, declined yeah. a lot. Did, didn't see much play. So Blake's thinking about his outs here. I think the fact that, that uh, people started playing Farseek instead of Mana Dorks was a big oh, factor in that. Oh, yeah. That's definitely a good point. I, th I think Blake just has to play Thragtusk here. I'm He's not... trying to decide if he can win, but he can't. He needs he needed a sixth land in order to deal, like... Well, he can't even win with that, so I don't know what he's thinking about here. Well, I think I think his best line might be to play Thrag Tusk and attack with Olivia, because he has to start trying to yeah. to deal some damage to, to he's combat. He's certainly the not going to be blocking with Olivia, so attacking with Olivia seems fine. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Yeah. All right, so Thrag Tusk comes into play tapped. Blind obedience is doing a lot of work here. Olivia is coming in. So the life total should be John at 7, Blake at 8. Yeah, the fact that that Thragtus comes in tapped is huge because he can't just trade off Thragtus. Oh. Blake just left himself dead on board. Did he? Yeah, because of the abrupt decay. Six. That he knew about. Yeah. So he couldn't attack with the Olivia. Right. We were giving him bad advice. We're like, attack with the Olivia. Well, I forgot that the Thragtus came in tapped too. And lose. Yeah, and then lose That's immediately. That's exactly what we did well, to him. You know. That's, that's what you get for listening to us. Yeah, so he wants to make sure he taps his mana correctly. With those double cavern, it's kind of, it's kind of awkward sometimes because yeah. you can't use blind obedience. Uh, there's abrupt decay. He's going to exhort this time. He's going to extort with his abrupt decay. So he Blake should be Blake on five. Five. And then he can only just block one of the two creatures in yeah. this game. And, then, and then that's that's the uh, that's yeah. it. Yeah. All right. So kind of a sloppy type game. But yeah, game one wasn't really a game of magic. Yeah, yeah, it was just a kind of a sloppy match all around. Yeah, it really was. Uh, but it really it did. On the one on the uh, the most important thing was it showcased the power of Obsidot Ghost Council in not just the spirits deck that we saw last week. It's powerful even when it doesn't have plus one plus one in hex group. It's fine all by itself. Yeah, it's, it's just a really powerful card. It's just, I mean, the ability just to always blink it out and just keep 